Cut two strips of ceramic tape to about three and three quarters inches. They'll be going around the heater end like this, and this one will be going around this way. Mark the center of each. And you'll cut a hole in the center using this piece here. Make sure you get it pretty much in the center. Put these aside for now, we'll be using them later. In the MK5 kit, you'll probably receive shorter, a shorter piece of ceramic tape, if so, then just cut one for 270 millimeters and do the same thing here. And then the longer one will, um, will have the same center cut. The kit will also include a solution that will be used to eliminate any freezing of the, of the assembly due to heat. So we're gonna be putting this stuff on the threads of both the, the nozzle and of this tube. Apply the anti-seize solution on the threads of the nozzle and of the thermal barrier. You can use your finger for this. You want to put it on pretty liberally. Okay, that should be enough. Now you can thread on the nozzle onto the heater core. Do it by hand and then you'll have to get an adjustable wrench to put it in all the way. So take a 13 millimeter wrench and adjustable crescent wrench and tighten them. I'll put on the thermal barrier. This will have to be tightened just with the fingers and just tighten it as much as possible. Insert the PTFE tube all the way in until it stops and we'll cut the end just to make sure the PTFE is going all the way in just to make a, a mark that doesn't seem to do it so we'll use a little knife here just to make a little mark and measure it looks like mine isn't going all the way through so it's good I did that make another mark Let's see yes that's going all the way down to the tip of the nozzle so go back to that point and then cut off the end a really sharp exacto knife should be able to do the trick. It should look like this when you're done. Now we can install the, res the power resistors using these little bolts, or these little screws, and the resistors themselves. There should be two holes here. These will go on with a little Allen wrench. And attach the other one. We're going to solder the two resistors in parallel. We're going to make these two connections. We'll make these two connections and then we'll wire them out from there. Use an X-Acto knife or a really sharp knife to cut the insulation off of this special wire. This wire is coated with PTFE, which will handle higher temperatures, so this is the best wire to use. I'm going to use as much of the wire as I can for the mechanical hold. I'll solder that on first. Now I'll wrap the other side. Before you solder this last, this other side, you'll have to add another extension of this. So this can be soldered to the next wire. As you don't want the other wire, which is naturally insulated, to be near the hot area. So I'm going to solder this side together.
Now we can do the same thing to the other side. Now we're going to solder the black and red wire to the PTFE wires. I'm just going to curl them in on each other, twist them, and solder. Yep. I'm using heat shrink to, to provide insulation. This is the thermistor for the Gen 3 electronics, and we're gonna be insulating it with Captain tape. This is a tiny device, so it's hard to hold, so it's gonna be difficult to do this, but I'm gonna first put it in between the wires so we can make sure the wires are gonna be always separated. Okay, so it's around one wire, and now I'm gonna to start to wind it around the rest of the wires. I'm going to make sure that the head of the thermistor is exposed and not insulated. And always make sure that the wires are separated. And I'm going to solder on the, the leads to the wire now. You can solder a wire to the thermistor lead by applying some solder on each end. And then apply solder to the other end. And then all you have to do is touch these two ends together. And they're soldered together. And do the same thing to the second one. And then all you have to do is touch the two ends together. It should be soldered together. Do the same to the next one. And just while the heat is on, touch the two together. Done. It's a very strong bond. Papa, can I sit in your lap? Now the remaining can be insulated with a captain tape. Okay, so this whole assembly is now insulated with captain tape. Not the easiest thing to do, but it's pretty important. We can attach the thermistor now to the heater block. You want it about this location, and you want to make sure that the other end is coming out of this corner. So when the, the ceramic insulation is put over, it sticks out of the, the areas that the ceramic is not going to be covering. To help hold it in place, I'll just start with one, one little piece of Captain tape, and then I'll put one on the end of the thermistor. Okay. Now I'm going to wrap the whole thing in Captain tape. Now we can add the ceramic insulation. This is why we made the hole. This is gonna come out the corner. Just squeeze the ceramic insulation underneath the wire. This may be a little bit difficult to do, especially on the side of the, on the side of the thermistor. I'm 
Okay. 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 Now we'll take the other one and put this around here. And now we're going to put captain tape all around it. Okay, now it's all covered with Kapton tape, and we can install it. 